In this video, I'm going to show you how Detect 3D performs for a 3D file mapping project of a complex geometry. I'm loading in a 90 megabyte Detect 3D project file which contains a model of the MERS Peregrino FPSO. The CAD originally came to us in 3D Studio Max format and we converted it into OBJ format using Rhino before loading it into Detect 3D and then saving the project file. You can see the model is now loaded into the software. The FPSO is a fairly complex and realistic model and contains around 3 million triangles. This compares to the 40,000 triangle model that I used in previous videos, so around 75 times larger. You can see it's a much more detailed model, and the immediate question is whether the ray casting algorithms that are central to Detect 3D can handle this type of geometry. If I select the geometry in the project items, you can see confirmation that the model contains nearly 3 million triangles. And it's important to note that Detect 3D does not remove any of these triangles to try to speed up the analysis. The model also contains layers, which you can turn on and off just to help with the visualization. So I'm now going to do a fire mapping analysis of one fire zone in the FPSO. But before I start, I wanted to show you that this is all done on my laptop, just like all my videos. It's got a 2.3 gigahertz CPU, 6 gigs RAM, and a 2 gigs graphics card. So not a desktop analysis machine by any stretch of the imagination. And it shows you that Detect3D doesn't need special hardware to run this type of complex analysis. OK, let's get going with the project. So I'm going to first add a flame detector pointing towards the area that I'm interested in. For those of you not familiar with Detect3D, I produced a Detect3D overview video, which is available on our website, which is insightnumerics.com. Here I'm just previewing the field of view of the flame detector I've just positioned. You can see that the azimuth is about right. But I'm going to angle it down by about 30 degrees, which is fairly typical for a detector, and you can see that here and I'm going to add that now to the project. Now this bar at the top indicates the progress of the current calculation, which is the ray casting algorithm to calculate the obstructed field of view for the detector I just added. There's no doubt that it took a few seconds rather than a few tenths of seconds, but that's just a function of the larger model that I'm looking at. I'm showing now the unobstructed field of view, but you can of course see the obstructed field of view here which is calculated very accurately using the adaptive ray casting techniques that we've developed at Insight Numerics. I can even zoom to show some rays coming through the railings, and this underlines the fact that every single triangle in the model is included in the ray casting calculation. I can see here that there were around 70,000 rays cast, and the analysis time was a shade over 10 seconds. I can reduce this by adjusting the accuracy of the ray casting calculation, and if I set the number of adaptive refinements to 1, you can now see that the calculation is noticeably quicker. And if we just wait to see the updated field of view, you can see that the drop-off in accuracy isn't that significant. OK, so I'm going to add a few more detectors now, but before I do, I'm just going to change this field of view to unobstructed. And then I'm going to add another flame detector at this corner here. I'm going to get a lock on those coordinates. There we go. And have a preview of that. It's very helpful to have this preview, especially in larger models, because you can check that the flame detector is correctly positioned and orientated before committing any calculation time. I'm just changing the azimuth here, 45 degrees, so it's in towards the area that I'm interested in. And I'm going to set the declination to 30 degrees as before. I'm going to change the adaptive refinements to 1 and then add that to the project. You can see that it zips through the ray casting calculation fairly quickly because I've set the number of adaptive refinements to 1, and you can see it's added to the project. And now we're interested in this area, so I'm going to add two more flame detectors at the corners of this building. I'm going to try and get a lock on those coordinates first. Okay. 
If I preview that, I can see that it's pointing completely the wrong direction, but I can change that if I set the azimuth here. Looks better. And now I'm going to have to set a much steeper declination angle because the detector is much higher. So if I set that to 45 degrees and click update, that looks good. So I'm going to add that to the project. And add now the fourth detector on the corner here. As before, I'm just going to get a lock on those coordinates. And you can see here that the project workflow is very similar to the smaller models that I showed in the previous videos. Even though it's a much more complex geometry, the software is very responsive and the analysis is done quite easily on the laptop. Just need to set this declination again to 45 degrees like before. And then add that fourth flame detector to the project. You can see it's going through its Raycar Sync calculations here. So that's four flame detectors we've added to the project, and we haven't yet added a fire zone. So let's do that. I'm first going to turn off the visibility of the flame detectors, but turn on their labels to remind ourselves where they are. So the fire zone is going to encompass this area here. I'm going to go from this point to this point, and if I set the zone up, I'll just get a lock on those coordinates. Okay, and a lock on the opposing corner. And I'm going to set the fire zone to have a 5 meters height. Preview it. That looks good, so I'm just going to add that to the project. We covered fire zones in some detail in the last video, and you can see here that something's taking a bit of time to calculate. What's going on is that it's calculating which points in the background point cloud are internal to the geometry and which points are external. This has a very important effect on coverage statistics, but the calculation is extremely complex. Let's now finish that calculation and we can see that the external volume is different to the total volume. And we can visualize the results of that calculation by looking at the internal volume itself, which is shown in purple. You can see that it's found areas which are inside the geometry to a very high degree of accuracy, and that's very beneficial for the accuracy of the mapping analysis. It's also calculated the coverage statistics already for that fire zone. We can see it's 14% zero coverage, 85% one or more, and 44% two or more. As usual, we can visualize the results using ISO volumes. And here I'm just adding one at zero visibility, which is showing the blind spots in the fire zones. You can see that the ISO volume was added virtually instantly to the project, and this is because the calculation of the ISO volume is really unaffected by the complexity of the geometry. We can take a look at the blind spots, and we can see that there are significant blind spots in this area of the fire zone. So I'm going to add a couple more flame detectors here, just to try and reduce those blind spots. Okay, so I've got a little bit of maneuvering to try and get a lock on some likely looking places that you could put a flame detector. Just going to lock on these coordinates. And let's have a preview. Okay, so it's uh, pointing in completely the wrong direction, so I'm going to have to swivel that round by 180 degrees. Okay, that looks good. And as regards the declination, it actually looks at the right level as it is, so we can leave that at zero. Now just take a look at this blind spot here. You can see that it's updated it in real time, which is a really nice feature of the software. You can actually really see the effect that each flame detector has as you're doing the project. So as you're placing flame detectors and updating the analysis, you can actually see the results updating and feeding back to you how well the flame detector layout is performing. This is the final flame detector I'm going to add. I'm just going to swivel that round to point towards this blind spot. Again, the declination is good enough, so I'm just going to add it. And again, let's have a look at that blind spot to see if it's updated. 
And there we go. So now we can have a look at the results in a little more detail. First, I'm just going to turn off the unobstructed fields of view and turn on the labels just to make it a little bit clearer. Okay, now let's have a look. So these blind spots look fairly small now, fairly acceptable. Uh, there is a maybe a slight issue here, but nothing too bad. If I have a look now at the coverage statistics, I can see that the zero visibility is reduced well below 5%, uh, above 96% one or more, and 59% two or more. Now I've just added an ISO volume at zero visibility, but I can of course see all the results using ISO volumes. Here I'm just adding one at two or more, which is going to appear in red. So this is all the volume of the fire zone that's visible to two or more flame detectors. I'm just going to turn that one off, and I'm going to add another one at three or more. This is useful if three or more is too much. So you can see areas which are over covered and it helps you position detectors to point them more towards blind spots and out of areas that have three or more uh, flame detectors. I can also use contours to visualize the results. Here I'm going to add one at one meter above the base of the fire zone which is 33 meters. I'm going to add that to the project and we can see the coverage results on that horizontal cut plane. Okay, so I've got a pretty good flame detector layout and I've added some visualization. So now I'm going to follow through with the project to the outside world and we've worked hard to make this possible for you to do. First thing you can do is to auto generate flame detector layout reports. I'm showing one here in PDF. This is something you could give to somebody on site and help them with the installation of the flame detectors. The slowest part of this demonstration is unfortunately Adobe Reader, as you'll see here. PDF's actually fully formed, it's just that the reader is obviously slightly slow to pick it up, but there we go. It's got project information at the top which you can edit to whatever you like. It's got all the flame detectors there, the model, the manufacturer, the location and the orientation. And actually for each one you can actually add installation notes, and I'll show that in later videos. Just closing that. Uh, if you don't want to produce a flame detector layout report, you can save images. Uh, and these can go in your reports to your customers or clients. Uh, so you can output very nice looking images uh, showing the flame detector layout and its various strengths and weaknesses. Here I'm going to show one of the blind spots. I'm just going to save that image. call it zero visibility and I'm just going to open that up so you can see exactly what it looks like. This is just a PNG file that you can put anywhere you want. You can also copy things to the clipboard and then just paste them directly into Word. So this is really nice if you're producing a project. You can very quickly create great looking graphics. Just go copy to clipboard there and then it's simply a control V and it goes directly into your report in Word. There we go. Okay, back to the report. I mean, a very common image is to look at a plan view of the contour plot. This is typically what 2D mapping will show you only. Uh, but of course, with 3D mapping, you can see ISO volumes and all other kinds of things. But with uh, 2D mapping, you can't. Obviously, with 3D mapping, you can see this as well and you can produce these kind of uh, plan view contour plots. Again, copy to clipboard, and I can, again, control V, <coughs> paste that into my Word report, and there it is. Okay, so that completes the demonstration of Detect3D firing gas mapping with a complex geometry. I hope you've seen that it handles it very, very efficiently and very well, even on a laptop. And you can see that the project follows right the way through from loading the CAD file to your reports. Thanks very much for listening. You can find out more on insightnumerics.com.